Rich, your open source advocate. Welcome back. And today I'm going to be covering some more bandwidth monitoring tools. So with the first video, a lot of you really liked it and, and liked all the tools that are provided. Um, these are local tools for your local machine. And I did have some requests for some tools that can actually monitor your entire network. So I will get around to those tools as well. I'm collecting up a list and I'm starting to learn about how they work and how they function so I can make a good tutorial for you guys so you can learn and understand how to use those tools as well. And at the very least, I want to be able to give you the basics of how to get them set up and how to get some monitoring going because it's great for somebody to give you an install tutorial, but if they don't really tell you how the thing works, a lot of times that install tutorial was pretty much it. You're going to get it installed, you're going to forget about it because you can't figure it out and you're going to move on. So I don't ever want to give you that kind of information unless it's kind of a special request type uh, video where I admit right up front that I know nothing about the actual context of the software. So for instance, ERP Next that I did last year, I wanted to tell you guys up front and I tried to be very clear that I don't know anything about ERP systems, but I did want to show you how to install that system. And I've had a lot of questions, a lot of interest in that uh, video, but I get a lot of questions about ERP itself and how ERP Next functions. And, and I get that about a lot of the videos I make. So if I ever answer you and I tell you, hey, you might go ask over at this page, you know, at the GitHub page or over at this forum, it's not because I'm being a jerk. It's because I literally don't have a good answer to give you, and I'm just not sure. But I want to point you in a direction where you might be able to get the answers that you're looking for. So I hope you guys will appreciate it when I do provide you that information and try to point you in the right direction. Um, that's always my goal. So we're going to get into installing three really cool tools for doing some bandwidth monitoring today. Uh, the first one is NetHogs. This was by request after the last video came out. Uh, this one here is called Speedometer, another one that I came across earlier and I just wanted to kind of save it for the second video, but it's a really nice uh, application as well. And then uh, the last one is IPTRAF, which a few of you kind of talked about as well and I've seen it in some other places. It's a little bit more of an advanced tool in my opinion, but I'll show you how to how to get it open or how to get it installed, how to open it up, and then how to navigate and kind of start using it to, to, to monitor IP traffic. So it's pretty great. Um, I, I like all three of these tools. I think they're a great addition to the tools that I showed on the first video. So I hope you guys will take these things, put them into practice where they make sense and use them in a way that makes sense for you. And, and I understand not every tool is perfect for everyone. That's never going to be the case. And that's the wonderful thing about open source software is that there are thousands and thousands of tools out there that are open source. And when you're looking at one specific sector, there's usually at least five or six options that you can find the one that you like the most and then just go after it. So we're going to get into the installation of these tools right after this. I want to say thank you to all of my subscribers and all of my patrons over at Patreon. Seriously, you guys make this so worth it for me to do these videos every week. I really, truly enjoy it, and I just can't say thank you enough. If you're enjoying these videos, subscribe. Let YouTube know that I'm doing a good job by subscribing to the channel. Plus, you'll get notified when I have new videos coming out. And finally, if you're enjoying what I'm doing, give it a like. Just click on that thumbs up, and that way YouTube knows that you like it, and they'll pass it along to other people that might enjoy my content as well. I really appreciate it. Thank you again. Let's get started. All right, first we're going to start with NetHogs, which is really kind of an awesome tool. It does some bandwidth monitoring, but it does something kind of special, and it shows you what things are actually using up the most bandwidth on my NIC or on my card, and, and how do I, you know, why? So you might be wondering, like, what in the world is taking up all my, all my bandwidth? So like on their example here, you can see that it's Teams, and then it's Chrome, and then Firefox. So, so they've got different things that it's actually telling you like, hey, here's the things that I see using up some bandwidth on your system. You might want to go check these things out. If you're having slow connections or just a slow connection that you don't really know why, NetHogs could be the solution to help you go figure that out, which, which I think is really cool. So uh, we're going to bring up our terminal here. And I am going to get out there and install NetHogs. So if you're on a, a Debian or Ubuntu-based system, you're just going to use apt. If you're on Fedora, CentOS, Red Hat, um, those types of systems, you're going to use DNF or YUM. Um, if you're on SUSE, somebody sent me that, that the other day, and I apologize. I forgot what the command is. Uh, but there should be a version for SUSE as well. Arch is going to be in the AUR if it's not in the regular Arch repositories. Um, so, so always go check out the, the repositories first because that's the easiest way to get these things installed. Now sometimes you want the newest, most awesome, coolest version of it. And in those cases, sometimes your repos are not up to date with probably the exception of uh, SUSE uh, where it's the rolling version and maybe the exception of Arch where Arch is pretty much rolling all the time. 
Um, but with Debian, Ubuntu, those kind of things, you, you tend to get maybe a little older version occasionally and you want the new thing. Then go out to their GitHub pages and figure out do they have uh, another way for me to install that and you know check those things out. Definitely look at your, your options whenever you do these things. But today we're going to go with our, our repos because it's pretty simple. So we're going to do sudo apt install and then it's just nethogs. Really simple, really straightforward command. And I'm going to put in my super user password for my machine here. Yeah, NetHog is already the newest version, so I've already got that one on this machine. So if you do that, though, it should come down and install for you. In this case, it's just telling me I can also remove some packages. I'll do that later. It's not a big deal. Um, so if I want to run NetHogs, I'm just going to run uh, sudo NetHogs in this case because it does want sudo privileges in order to monitor a lot of the stuff that you're using. So I'm going to start it up, and you'll see it's going to start building this list of things that are actually using up bandwidth. So in this case, Barrier, which I'm using to share my mouse and keyboard between uh, two machines here that are sitting next to each other. And then we've got Firefox, we've got ExpressVPN, Daemon is running in the background, Telegram Desktop's running in the background, um, and then Unknown TCP, um, maybe NetHogs itself doing something in the background. I don't know what that would be, uh, but you can see kind of what's running, and you see which, uh, which port it's running on. So if I take and plug in... Uh, my actual Ethernet port on this machine and give me just a second to kind of reach around some stuff and get to it because I have my machines kind of set up in a, in a dock that's in, in, in a certain uh, kind of clamshell mode I guess you'd say. So I plugged in my Ethernet port you can see that it's popping up down here that it's looking for an address and we may see some traffic coming from that Ethernet port here in a minute where it switches from the wireless potentially. Um, I do think that we could get some other traffic going, so let me find some other applications to kind of get up and running here. And yeah, not a lot, so I mean, even Rocket Chat didn't, didn't really bring it up. It kind of runs Firefox in the background, but now you can see my mesh agent is talking to my mesh service um, in the background as well. So you start to see what NetHogs can do, even though I don't have a lot of traffic going um, right now. It, it can kind of tell you, hey, here's the things that are using up the most bandwidth and if you if you ever have something really heavy using up a ton of bandwidth it would be up here at the top and you could kind of check it out and see like is that supposed to be using up that much bandwidth or is it just something that shouldn't be running and you can kind of take care of that issue right away if you want to get out of net hogs you can hit Q I believe yes and Q quits out of it for you and that is net hogs so we're gonna move on to our next one And we're going to jump over to Speedometer, which I really like. Speedometer is pretty great, and it does kind of what it says. Now, uh, but we're going to go and install Speedometer. And I may have that one installed already as well. But uh, again, it's really not hard to install. We're just going to do sudo apt install. Oops, and you got to spell sudo correctly. sudo apt install speedometer. Um, I always put two Ds instead of two Es, so I had to check my spelling there. And again, it's already installed, so we're, we're set. Um, did I get it correct? Speed. Nope, I put three E's. That's the problem. Yeah, there we go. It is already installed, though, so I can do an apt auto remove. It's just telling me that again. Now, when you're getting ready to run the speedometer command, you want to make sure that you have the correct nickname in here. So mine is WLP2S0. It is not WLAN0. So you got to be really careful about making sure that you give that the right thing, or you'll get an error when you try to run the command. So now that I've got those corrected, I'm going to hit enter. And you'll see speedometer comes up and it starts kind of showing me what I want to see on the screen. Now I don't have a lot of traffic going, so we're not seeing a whole lot of stuff happening here. But I think if I go to the background and maybe I upload an ISO, um, let's go to, and I'm going to upload this Clonezilla ISO here real quick and we'll look at what the bandwidth looks like. So I'm just going to click on upload. And we'll go back and we'll kind of watch bandwidth. And again, it may be running through my network card that is my Ethernet card. So if we don't see what we're expecting, we can hit Q. And we can just run and we can run the... So we can check out EN01. And we can see what the bandwidth looks like on that. So that should be running across now. And we can check out our bandwidth. And now you can see yeah, our upload bandwidth is just spiking completely and our download bandwidth is starting to show something. And this is speedometer so you can kind of see what's going on in your system. And it gives you readouts of what's happening at the time. And you can kind of see here at the bottom a summary of what's going on as well. Very, very simple to see what's going on with speedometer. And again, a really nice graphical tool that gives you a lot of information and you can kind of check out what's happening there. So speedometer is a great application, a uh, great tool. I'm going to go ahead and quit out of speedometer. We're going to clear that out. 
And the last one that we're going to look at is IPTRAF. So again, doing uh, installation of IPTRAF, we're going to do sudo apt install. And this one we're going to do IPTRAF-NG. This is the one that you want to install because I tried IPTRAF the original first and it wouldn't work for me. Um, so we're just going to hit enter and it's going to tell me, hey, you've already got this thing. But if you don't, it's going to install IPTRAF-NG for you. And then when we're ready to run that one, we're just going to do sudo iptraf-ng and a lot of these use sudo because they're trying to access NIC data and you want to be really careful about what's allowed to do that so it uses root privileges but you have to provide it those privileges so there's the traffic monitor the general interface statistics detailed interface statistics statistical breakdowns you have a whole lot of information that comes out of iptraf um, you have configuration here so there's a lot you can do reverse dns lookups tcp udp service you can do um, force promiscuous mode you can check colors you can do logging activity mode source mac address information so it tells you kind of the first letter that you need to click here to get to something so you see timers additional information so if i say exit configuration i want to use x and then we can move up and we can say ip traffic monitor and it says all interfaces but then you have this list and you can pick which interface you want to monitor so let's just pick this one and we're going to hit enter and you can see what's happening here and it starts rolling and scrolling and it's kind of telling you like hey there's this traffic happening to 160 and you know here's what it looks like um, here's the traffic that's going out to these other machines that you might want to be interested in so this says 50 but it's actually part of 160 because it's a virtual machine running on this machine so that's why you see 50 showing up there uh, 93 I believe is also a machine that's running on that one but you can kind of see what IP traff can do for you there and again as you look down here at the bottom you have different options for things that you can do and you can use uh, up down page up page down you can you can see more TCP info uh, W change activity window uh, things like that and then we can do X again for exit if we want to get out of that um, so we can see detailed interface statistics and we can check out EN01 and we can see more statistics this color is miserable um, and I'm sorry about that this is just the default color that it comes with I'm not a fan of it but if you want to change the colors you did see that option back there um, so if we do X and we go back to configure um, I believe that we had color settings somewhere yes right here color turns color on or off restart oh okay I see so you have to turn it on or off Ooh, that's that's interesting I don't know how many times I've clicked that thing at this point oh it's on oh okay I see it's off there we go it's over here and it's really really hard to tell so it's on or off so I wonder if we do off what that will do um, we have to exit and then we have to restart IP traffic oh yeah oh, this is much better um, it's not going to be as pretty, I'm sure, but um, if we say, let's look at detailed interface information again. Yeah, this is much more legible, at least for video recording. If you want to leave the colors when you're ready, go for it. But yeah, this to me makes, makes it much easier to see. So this is IP traff. Look, I mean, this is just a, a ton of information that you can get from this uh, particular um, application. If we do statistical breakdowns uh, by TCP UDP port, let's check that out. And we'll check out what EN01 looks like there it goes so it's going to start running statistics and it's saying TCP 443 here's the breakdown so this is pretty awesome too you can kind of check out port statistics and things like that which is really great so we'll exit out of that one uh, land station monitor and let's do this so let's see what's happening here um, so they're giving us the packets in and the IP that's bringing that in so you can see some IPv6 traffic going on here bytes in and then the in rate the packets out again IP out bytes out and the out rate so you can kind of see some pretty interesting information here um, and then you can of course scroll up and down and then you can look at the sort and the and then you can of course exit the window so general interface statistics so you can really check out and see like which interface is actually doing all the work here and of course it's it's the one where I've got it plugged into the wire because it's just a preferred interface because it's quite a bit faster than wireless um, and then again back to the IP traffic monitor we could pick this one it's probably not going to have quite as much but it's going to have some traffic going on it um, so you can see the TCP entries that are happening and UDP entries that are happening and where it's going um, a lot of it's going out to my server where I run a lot of my docker containers which is pretty pretty expected um, and then I see a lot of the server IP addresses kind of scrolling by that are just other machines that I know this should be talking to on my network um, you can see some getting highlighted there so pretty interesting but WLAN 0 is really not or WLAN is not doing much right now um, the interesting one is really uh, EN01.
and that's where we're getting a lot of traffic because I'm uploading a file in the background that's massive. So you can really see what's happening there. But this is IP Traff. This is a really cool um, tool. And if you haven't checked it out, I would suggest it because if you're wondering what's going on in your network, I've given you now six or seven tools to kind of see what's happening on your network. Um, I really I really like these tools. They're really great, and they, they, they help you a ton um, when you're trying to figure out where there's a problem in your network, especially. If you're wondering, like, is my machine just using something crazy, some crazy amount of, uh, of data or, or bandwidth for something, this is another great way to see that. But even just for home use, where you're trying to figure out, like, what's going on in my network? Have I set it up correctly? Can I make changes to make it better? These tools could come in very handy for something like that. So I hope you'll check out NetHogs, IP Traff, and Speedometer. Put them to use. Try them out. If you like them, keep using them. If you don't, then I've given you other, other tools to check out as well. And I will have some future videos on tools that you can use to monitor your entire network. I wanted to open up some channels for discussion, so I've created this Rocket Chat server, and I've got it mixed up with Jitsi Meet. I've created a few channels already to start up some discussions, but of course we can always open up more channels. If you'd like to jump in and send me a direct message or just ask a question on one of the channels, I'll be monitoring the system. It'll be up and running. I'm going to leave this up and going so that we can have a place where we can all come together and answer each other's questions and have good discussions and good conversations. It's discuss.opensourceisawesome.com. Again, that's discuss.opensourceisawesome.com. I'll have the links in the show notes and the description. Hope you enjoyed this. If you did, like, subscribe, tell your friends about it so they can come along the journey with us, and I'll talk to you next time.